Great. No, thank you. Uh, appreciate you all inviting me to have this important conversation of how this these extraordinary times are affecting our immigrant communities, our refugees communities, our unaccompanied minors. As you can imagine, our immigrant communities once again bear the brunt of this pandemic and of this extraordinary situation. Um, and the irony, Pilar, that I feel is how uh, finally the broader society is understanding that immigrants and the work that immigrants are doing are essential services. When you look at who's in our who's doing the farm labor, who's delivering our groceries, who are, is working in those warehouses um, and, and packing all those goods that we're now uh, buying online, it is primarily immigrants who are doing these jobs and are now considered essential workers that for you and I have always been essential workers. The work that my parents have done all their lives has been essential not only to this economy of this country, but to this great state. And we're seeing this firsthand now. Um, and so as we continue to, um, you know, figure out how we survive as a community, we have to make sure that our immigrants are protected. And of course, here in California, you know, the work that we've done to ensure that our immigrant communities, our immigrant children have access to the full scope Medi-Cal. And of course, when I was in the Senate, work to make sure that our undocumented communities if they got injured at work, would have access to workers' compensation benefits was critical and now full circle into and, and how we are today. Uh, many of these companies who are employing our immigrant communities, if our communities are being infected during work uh, as the essential work that they're providing, they qualify for worker compensation benefits as well. We've cut the cost of co-pays and cost sharing when it comes to um, uh, providing uh, the, the exam for COVID-19, the governor and I put that in, in place a while back. We're asking uh, our uh, insurance companies who have auto insurance to make sure that they don't change the rate of uh, the premiums for folks who have expired license. Of course, that of, of course affects our undocumented community who have AB60 licenses. Make sure they don't lose any type of discount and that the law enforcement folks are not going to give them a ticket because they're driving with a, a, a not a valid license. And so we continue to kick out these notices time after time to make sure that we're capturing uh, our all our communities, but are actually focusing on our undocumented community because now more than ever, we know that we want them to access health care if they feel sick. We want them to continue to work and contribute as essential workers uh, without fear of losing their license or losing their discount. And if they have health care, that we give them that 60-day grace period if they can't no longer uh, be able to pay their premiums and still keep their health care for themselves and their families. So there's a whole host of things that we're doing uh, and that we're going to continue to do to make sure that we protect our not only all our Californians, which includes our undocumented communities and immigrants here in California. In Santa Rosa, California, sick nurses had to prove that they had become sick on the job with COVID-19. Um, how do you empower workers, um, uh, especially those who are undocumented, uh, to prove that they're, um, they're sick because of their job when we know that in many places, like for example, in the agricultural industry, they're not being given the tools to protect themselves. They're not being given the education. Right. Exactly. And what we're, what, we're, what we're asking our immigrant communities that get infected at work, uh, we are working closely, the Department of Insurance is working closely with the uh, California Department of Industrial Relations. Uh, and there's a number, it's 1-800-736-7401. And we're encouraging folks to call that number uh, because we are tracking these with between the Department of Insurance and the Department of Industrial Relations to make sure that we help our immigrant communities. Uh, in my department, we're fully staffed on our consumer hotlines to make sure that we're, ask, uh, we're, we're prepared to answer any questions, whether it's small business folks. Uh, many of our immigrant communities are small business owners and are forced to shut down. And so we have lines open to help them through their process 
uh, and through any other insurance related need, as well as the Department of Industrial Relations, so that we're coordinating. All the departments now are, are trying to manage and coordinate to make sure that we fight for those uh, resources for our communities. Auto insurance, and, and also you ordered insurers to do some refunds. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um, we What we have been noticing as well as all of us is the fact is that less people are on our roads. And that has really changed the risk profile for so many Californians. The likelihood of you getting in an accident uh, has lessened. And so as premiums are being calculated for Californians and for different policies, that risk is taken into account. And so now that that risk has drastically uh, been reduced since people, we want them to, to adhere to those orders. We want them to you know, stay home. So there's less people on our roads, meaning I've ordered the insurance companies to adjust this, adjust for this risk and give Californians uh, a refund, whether that's a credit or direct a direct check, uh, back to consumers because that profile has changed. And not only have we done it for um, drivers, we've done it for businesses who have workers' compensation insurance, multiple payroll insurance, commercial vehicle insurance, even for our healthcare providers, uh, medical malpractice, since they're not doing elective surgeries, that risk is lower as well. So we have uh, in the chat, we have um, Yurina, she's asking if you can make a statement in Spanish regarding the workers' comp, maybe. Or you, can you do that now or we can do it later? Uh, however you, however. Okay, you adelante. Look at Lo que hemos hecho en el Departamento de Seguros es asegurar de que los trabajadores, uh, ya sean inmigrantes o indocumentados, que sean infectados o, o han contraído el COVID-19 durante su trabajo, tienen derechos a recursos bajo Workers' Compensation, como cualquier otro trabajador en California. Uh, cuando estaba en el Senado, uh, promulgamos una ley para asegurar de que los trabajadores indocumentados también serían elegibles para estos recursos. Y hay que recalcar que aquí en California se le respeta el trabajo a nuestros trabajadores uh, indocumentados y queremos que sepan que hay recursos para ayudarles y, no, y queremos que acudan a los servicios para que se cuiden, no solo a ellos, pero a sus familias. Ok. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, we have a question in the chat from Carl from the podcast Poly by Design. Um, yeah, I had a question. In California, there's what's called the cumulative trauma in workers' comp where, for example, someone who gets carpal tunnel syndrome from using a keyboard at work becomes eligible for benefits. And those claims may arise, you know, way later than um, later on down the road. How will workers apply for benefits if symptoms arise later on as a result of the pandemic? Well, we're gonna use, we're gonna use the exact same requirements that we use for cumulative trauma, uh, understanding that, um, that even with with the if we change the the stay at home orders, we're still going to get people that are going to you know show symptoms or not show symptoms till later, uh, and so we're going to use the same criteria that we use now to make sure that our workers are covered through not only cumulative trauma but through the other services that we have. So um, of course we want to make sure that people understand that even when these stay-at-home orders are lifted or reviewed or updated, that if people still feel that they can't, they were infected during work, that they seek the resources they want, they need, and that we're going to make sure that they get those. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, 